Barbados is a small island nation that is facing existential challenges due to climate crisis. Rising water levels and flooding could deem the island nation unfit for human survival. Worse still, the rising ocean levels could lead to the disappearance of the whole island country as we know it today. It's for this reason that Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley has always championed for climate finance where private financial systems pay a compensation for climate damage in poor countries. Miyamotli demands that $5,000 billion be released from the World Bank and the private business community. In an interview with a Swedish journalist, Miyamotli tries to explain this. But when the journalist made the mistake of diverting the topic to debts and corruption in vulnerable countries as a reason why they should not receive this funding, all hell breaks loose. You were the first country in the world to get some sort of climate profile on your loans. What did that? What does it mean to Barbados? That, that for the first time, has the IMF given long-term capital with a significant moratorium, 10 and a half years moratorium on 20-year money. So to begin with, it gives me the space and time to do a lot of the things that I need to do without having to face the debt service in the next two, three, four years. And that therefore allows us to be able to have growth over the period of time to help us repay the loan in a way that does not retard or distort what I'm able to do for the rest of the country with respect to other areas of expenditure. The elephant in the room, what a lot of Western climate diplomats tell me is that leaders like yourself also carry a responsibility. Why are vulnerable countries still so debt stricken? Why is there still corruption? What is your response to that? You really want me to ask you? I do. Okay. Why is it that every time we talk about countries from the south, the first allegation is corruption? Last time I checked, in the USA and the UK and Europe, they're riddled with corruption, but nobody says that they're not capable of achieving their objectives because of corruption. Why is it that we're not talking about the fact that these countries became independent, having allowed those countries that colonized them to extract significant portions of their wealth, such that we had no proper housing, no proper education, no proper healthcare systems, no proper legal systems, no proper across the whole street, and certainly nothing to do with building social capital like community development and cultural enterprises. And what has happened is therefore that we have spent the time since independence trying to give our people what the global north has taken for granted and has supported by the extrication of centuries of wealth to give their people out of our blood, sweat and tears. Now when our blood, sweat and tears finances the industrial revolution and the industrial revolution then causes the climate crisis and then I have to pay for the consequences of the climate crisis because of the industrial revolution financed by our blood, sweat and tears then I think they have no moral authority to tell me anything about the financing of the climate or about why we don't have enough. Is it anger over this that fuels your energy? Anger? Absolutely not. Unfairness, lack of justice. They're not angry. I'm just disappointed that humankind still wants to believe that there's one world for a set of people and another world for another set.